Hello there. This is Being God's Obedient Servant Channel. Uh, today's lesson, or well, study, sorry, will be through uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17 through 19. It's mostly a straightforward reading. There's a little bit to learn in here. Um, but I will say for the most part of this, it will be uh, primarily um, talking about the laws that's specific for the Israelites. So, if you're new to this channel, uh, this is a uh, Bible study channel where I go through the Bible, you know, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And I just mostly, high, I don't, of course, you know, read through the Bible with other people that people may follow along and learn it faster and better than I did. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of parts of the Bible that a lot of people think don't pertain to us anymore, and they actually do. And some parts don't. And that's what this study's about. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump right on in here. Um, but, yeah, as I said before, it's mostly a straightforward reading. As I said, some parts of this, it's... It's kind of a lesson for us today. It explains a lot of other things about, you know, parts of this country and its past and everything. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get started here. Chapter 17, verse 1. That shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness. We don't really spell it one one word <laughs> anymore like that. Evil favoredness. For that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing, uh, transgressing his covenant and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and, a th and the thing cer certain that such abomination is wrought in Israel, then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which hath committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. At the mouth of two, uh, two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. The hands of the witness shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hands of all the people, so that thou shalt put the evil away from among you. Now, of course, from this little section here, God's emphasizing how important it is to keep evilness away from you. That way it doesn't contaminate you and cause you to sin as well. But also, you see part of this, you know, we have the, the, the Salem witch trials. That's a stain in Americans, uh, America's history. And some of this, you know, it was uh, talking about, you know, witches and worshipers of other and stuff like that and here it's talking about it even more but you know it kind of come from this people tend to forget that this is part of the law that doesn't pertain to us anymore i mean actually it never pertained to christians period um, this was just a law for the israelites jesus said when he finished the law this was part of it and that is being killed for being a sinner because um, now judgment is left to God, not us. And so anything that God says is an abomination to him, it is an abomination to him, but it's not supposed to be to us. Now, with the Israelites it is, you know, especially in, well, in Old Testament uh, times, you know, before Jesus, this is what God commanded them. But this was primarily, like I said before, that the people in the land that they're going into has done evil, uh, very bad evil. You're going to hear about it again here in a little bit. And so God wants 
the um, from the studies they found out that Israel becomes a, becomes part of the main trade route between Asia and Europe and everybody has to pass through Israel and if they go by ship they're going by the coastline also by Israel and this is to spread godliness instead of wickedness because the people in the land that is now Israel um, you know they they sacrificed their own children it's called passing through fire they murdered innocent babies and stuff and like today we have uh, a government and women all around the world supporting abortions which is murdering innocent babies and God uh, that angers God greatly and well the thing is today you can still be forgiven that sin but you have to admit the wrongdoing repent from your wicked ways and turn to God and ask for forgiveness and that's uh, the beauty of grace is you know we still can be forgiven but we have to ask for it and it has to be from our hearts it can't just we can't just say the words and it happen it you know we have to truly be sorry in our hearts for doing what we did but anyways um, let's continue on here verse 8 if there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment be between blood and blood between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the, into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priest, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee and according to the judgments which they shall tell thee thou shalt do thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left and the man that will do presumptuously and would not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God, or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me like as all the nations that are about me now this is already God telling the future of them because God keeps telling them later on that they don't need a king they have him he is to govern over them they don't need a king but then um, but he's already saying that they will ask for a king so it's like you know so this is like a prophecy that will be fulfilled, but of course, we only have it in Scripture, but this is the history of the Israelites, and this has already been proven that these, uh, uh, you know, the time frame, the carbon dating, whatever you want to say, you know, of the Scriptures, they have found these in other scrolls and stuff of that nature. So they have found this of Deuteronomy, and do know that the scrolls that are written of this they found is older than the scrolls written of the later end when they actually do ask for a king. But anyways, continue on verse 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to the end that he should multiply horses, for as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. 
Neither shall he multiply wives for him to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Now, um, <laughs> when the king stuff's happening, that part, the multiplying wives, it does happen. And um, so <laughs> it's like... <laughs> They tend to have forgotten this part, even the, even King David himself and his son. Um, they do these things. But um, let's continue on. It's like, it's like, you know, it's it's to show proof that, you know, even the best of us doesn't really, you know, always obey the Lord. And, you know, most of the time that's what the Bible is to teach us is that we're not, we, we, we will never be good enough to, you know, to get into God's kingdom on our own. We, we, we can't do it. We always fail in, the, in these manners. But, you know, anyways, continue on verse 18. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. <laughs> which, of course, you know, the multiplying wives part. Um, I think the first king, King Saul, had, uh, I don't know, I think it was, well, you know, 100 to 200 something wives and concubines. King David had 300 and something. King Solomon, King David's son, he had over 700 and something. That's the only ones I really remember right off the bat, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> He doesn't condemn them for it, though. Um, but he does, you know, he does say like a, like later on when you're in New Testament and it's talking about the the pastor or leader in a church can only be the husband of only one wife. This is what they're talking about. They're not, you know, if you have a legal right to divorce your wife and remarry, he is still only the husband to one wife. It's one wife at a time, not one wife total in your whole life. Um, but it has to be legal. In the eyes of God, legal that he, you know, divorce. Um, and there is, you know, stipulations for that. Even Jesus says, uh, well, the main stipulation is um, infidelity. Because Jesus says, you know, later on, and when we finally get the New Testament, it'll say Jesus will tell that, you know, if you're divorced for any other reason than infidelity, you shall remain single. So, but mostly it says a man has a right to divorce his wife if she's unfaithful to him. Now, that doesn't mean just infidelity. There's many, many ways of being unfaithful to people, especially your spouse. And not honoring them and respecting them and being honest to them, you know, those are ways as well. So... But anyways, I'm kind of jumping way ahead in there. But, you know, as I said, like, you know, this one little part, they kind of fail that. <laughs> but let's continue on here. Verse 20. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand nor to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Chapter 18. The priest, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, and he hath said unto them. And this shall be the priest due from the people, from them that offer a sacrifice, whether it be ox or sheep, or they, or they shall give unto the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the maw. 
I didn't look up what maw means, but evidently, you know, we're talking about part of an animal. But continue on. The first fruit also of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the first of the fleece of thy sheep, shalt thou give him. For the Lord thy God hath chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons, forever. And if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of all Israel, where he sojourned, and come with all the desire of his mind unto the place which the Lord shall choose, then he shall minister in the name of the Lord his God, as all his brethren the Levites do, which stand there before the Lord. They shall have like portions to eat, beside that which cometh of the sale of his patrimony. Now, <clears throat> like I was talking about before, uh, well, if you're new to this, you're not going to know this uh, unless you, you know, unless you already knew this part. But this is where you know that when the Catholics say they you know, they do what they do with having a priest and nuns and all this other stuff, um, it's false. The only priests that are allowed are Levites. You have to be a descendant of Aaron. You have to, uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's just, you know, you have to be a Levite, and which is the, you know, tribe that Aaron and Moses both are from. They were Levites. Um, before, I've always said you had to be a descendant of Aaron, but Aaron was the first priest. And now the uh, Levites that are still around because, you know, the 40, 40 years in the wilderness, the ones, you know, the elder ones that sinned against God had to die in the wilderness before they can come into the new land. Um, you know, they may not be descendants, descendants of Aaron, but they still are of the tribe of Levite. And so I kind of had it wrong. They were saying, you know, a priest has to be a descendant of Aaron. But it does have to be the, from the tribe that Aaron and Moses is from to be a priest. That's the only people allowed to be priests of God, period. No one else. Because in New Testament with Jesus, he is the last. Um, well, it's actually, he does not, he's not even listed as a priest. He's listed as, you know, well, he's supposed to be our master. He's also called a prophet, a healer. But it's, um, well, Jesus says, you know, he's here to finish the law. And part of that is that. So, and the, uh, well, I've said the Catholics do their thing. It's kind of weird. Because they say, like, you know, to be a priest, you have to have no wife. And the Bible never says that. It says if you can remain single, you should. That way you can better serve the Lord. But it doesn't say you have to. And to tell a woman that she can't have a husband goes against God's word. Because God says a woman that does not desire a husband and childbirth is useless in the eyes of the Lord. And... So it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of weird, but <clears throat> you know, it's everybody will have to answer for what they do because God says you are not to add to or take away from the Word of God. It says it in Old Testament, and it's going to say it in New Testament as well. It's already said it in Old Testament. I don't know if it says it anymore in here, but it's already said it uh, once or twice. So. God really means it when he says it. So let's continue on here. Uh, verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. That's what I was talking about before, the passing through fire and stuff. So continue on. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth d divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Okay, so here's that part I was talking about before where it's like, you know, the um, the Salem witch trials comes from this part as well. 
Uh, this is the part talking about, you know, being the witch stuff. Anyways, verse 11. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Necromon. It's fiction of them. <laughs> I was doing Chronicles of Riddick there for a second. Necromonger. <laughs> Necromancer. I wonder if that's where they got the name from. They just changed it. Verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners, but as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. The Lord thy God will raise up upon, uh, unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Oreb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise, raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a, a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously thou shalt not be afraid of him so I was talking about this before you know uh, someone calls himself a prophet and they say well this will come to pass and if it doesn't come to pass then they're not a prophet but also if they say they're a prophet they're to be charged with that for being a false prophet and they're, they're to be executed for it Let's continue on here and chapter 19. When the Lord thy God hath cut off the nations whose land the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their cities and in their houses, thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Thou shalt prepare thee a way that divide the coast of thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit into three parts that every slayer may flee thither. And this is the case of the slayer which shall flee thither that he may live whoso killed his neighbor ignorantly whom he hated not in time past. Of course we call that today you know uh, some form of manslaughter. <clears throat> As when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetcheth a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the hill, and lighteth upon his neighbor that he die, he shall flee unto one of those cities and live. Lest the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer, while his heart is hot, and overtake him, because... The way is long, and slay him, whereas he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he hated him not in time past. Wherefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt separate three cities for thee. And if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways, then thou, sh sh 
then shalt thou add three cities more for thee beside these three. Now I will say this one part is still for us today. We are to love the Lord our God and walk ever in his ways. Um, which pretty much, you know, we're to live as he commands. But, now remember, the law is different from commandment. Because the things that specifically for the Israelites are for the Israelites only. The other stuff is for everybody. That's your main difference. Uh, verse 10. That innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. But if any man hate his neighbor, and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him mortally, that he die, and fleeth into one of these cities, then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence, and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Thine eye shall not put pity, shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel from Israel, that it may go well with thee. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thy inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in, in any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priest and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness be a false witness, and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he hath thought to have done unto his brother, so shalt thou put evil away from among you. Kind of wish we had that in the court systems today, instead of just this charge of perjury that's never used. Um, this would definitely... <laughs> sway people from lying in the court system goes oh you want to try to get them to the death penalty well now you have it or you try to get them to spend 15 years in prison you're gonna lie about them then you're gonna spend 15 years <laughs> yeah that would that would stop a lot of it but our, our main judicial system also wants to make sure like even god's you know god even says that it's better that one guilty go free, I'm sorry, that a hundred guilty go free versus one innocent go to prison or, you know, be judged, you know, be fal falsely, uh, you know, be found guilty. So that's kind of why how our system is today here in America. So, And those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you, and thine eye shall not pity, but life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. And of course, this is the end of uh, the lesson here, or the study. I'll apologize for my dogs earlier walking around if you heard them. Uh, <laughs> they kind of just, they're supposed to already be asleep, but they're not. But yeah, so back in the early times of America, this is how all the law was done. That if you uh, murdered somebody, you were hung for it. Your life was taken of you. Uh, if you take someone's eye, your eye gets taken. If you take someone's tooth, your tooth gets taken. If you take someone's hand, your hand is taken. Your foot for foot. That's kind of how it means that whatever you do to someone else should be done to you. But, you know, now, this kind of still stands today as a just justice system. But remember, it can't be just one witness. It has to be two or more. But it only works if the law of perjury is also done 
as commanded in the Bible. That whatever the liar in the court, you know, is trying to do to whom they're fault, you know, doing falseness to, then that has to be done to them, which is, uh, as most of us know today here, and especially, you know, especially in America, that people are lying in the courts all the time and ain't nothing happening to them, and so we're having a corrupt court system. We're having a very corrupt just justice system. It's it's almost unjust. We have guilty people going free, but we also have innocent people, you know, going to prison. We have uh, the the end times, you know, revelations uh, speaks of these days to where good would be called evil and evil would be called good. And it's going to be a worldwide problem. And we're heading there. Just the main thing is, you know, people need to be, uh, the Bible says, well, God says, when these things start to happen, look up. You because know, we're getting, we're getting close. Um, most of the prophecies has already come true. Israel will be a land within a day. They lost the land of Israel for quite some time after the death of Jesus. Uh, um, Israel didn't stand for long, but then the Jews, you know, what they are called today, called Jewish people, they were scattered all around the world. But then World War II from them being, you know, murdered, millions of them murdered by Hitler and the Nazis, then um, part of the part of you know Israel became their land again. They were a nation in a day, and then the very next day after that, they were attacked. <laughs> you know. But God's calling all the Israelites back to Israel. The Bible says these things will come to pass. And it says, you know, the world will go back against Israel. I'm sorry, not the will go back, but all of the world except one nation is going to go to war with Israel. But God's going to fight the war for Israel. No one can take away what God giveth. That's what we got to know from the Bible. I'm hoping, because America has always stood with Israel, that America is the nation that still comes to the aid and fights with Israel and not against Israel. But, you know, I guess uh, if we're still around, we'll have to wait and see. You know, <laughs> see who that is. But, anyways, so this is uh, I said this is the end of this study. So this is a quick one. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and end this one here. I can go ahead and get started on the next one. I was hoping I was going to be reading for a lot more because I'm trying to do a, you know, kind of close to at least 45 minutes instead of just 30 minutes. But I thought it was going to take just a little bit longer <laughs> to get, to go through three chapters, but it didn't. Um, still kind of working out all the. Don't really have it all timed all that well, but I'm trying. I'm normally around 60 to. 80 verses I should be in that window unless it's one that's got a lot of stuff to discuss and then sometimes I can spend probably half an hour just in one chapter of 10 verses that's the way it goes so as I said uh, I'm going to end this lesson here so do a quick prayer let's do a quick prayer dear Heavenly Father thank you for your words thank you for your lessons uh, please help us learn your word and share your word with others. Um, 
you command that we're to spread the gospel to all living things and I'm hoping to with stuff like this that we're able to do so I'm hoping you know more and more people hear your word and come to you you know before it's too late but like your teaching says your kingdom is uh, members only and we only have this one life for our tryouts so our nations need your guidance father uh, America's leaders need your need your guidance they're being misled horribly by evil by wickedness so Lord I just help I, I just ask and hope that uh, it's in your will just to help you know as many people around the world as you can in Jesus name I pray these things amen well, I hope you and uh enjoyed the reading and said it's pretty straightforward this one so until next time god bless good night and goodbye